Hi everyone, Wayne Wallace here, and in this video, I'm going to give an overview of using the Add This plugin for your WordPress website to get uh, share buttons down here on your blog posts. Okay, so this is my How to Protect Your Privacy Online.com website, and at the bottom of each blog post, I have the Add This plugin. The nice thing about this plugin is you um, just add the WordPress plugin and you have all these options for basically every social media platform. If someone has a sign in account, then it's very easy for them to share your blog posts on whatever website that they frequent. Uh, I also use this to share my own posts, and it makes it really easy. So once I post something, I log in with a different account and I share using these um, buttons here. So makes it easy for your visitors and it makes it easy for yourself to share. So let me show you how I did this. I'm going to go over here to my Chrome browser and I'm already logged into the admin panel. I can go over here to plugins and do an add new. I've already got the plugins installed but I'll just show you how to do it if you don't go to add new and once it comes up you just type add this all together no spaces because that's the way they kind of brand themselves and you, you'll see a bunch of options here I've installed quite a few of them as you see here I've got share buttons by add this Follow buttons by add this, smart layers by add this, uh, add this social sign in, uh, add this welcome bar, add this train, trending content. Um, so I've tried out all these. It can get a little overpowering if you add all of them. So I've actually trimmed mine back to just the bare essentials now, but I still have them installed because I may play with them later. So let me show you how they work. I'm going to go here to plugins. And the main one that you want for this type of functionality would be the um, the uh, the let's see, social bookmarking widget. I believe that's the one. So if you um, once you install this one and you come down here to your settings area you'll see um, let me reduce the size of this you'll see some options down here for the different settings for the plugins so what you can do is go down here to the add this share option And then that's going to bring up the management page. And I think basically any of those settings that I go to is going to bring me to this page. They've kind of consolidated everything into one page. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the Add This website and set up an account, which I've done over here. This is my account for how to protect your privacy.com. I have different accounts. And so I set up the privacy. I mean, set up the account, and then I have my account ID, which I get from over here. If you go to settings, you get your account ID uh, in here somewhere. Let's see if I can find it under profiles, I think. Yeah, so there's my profile ID right there. You can have different profiles. I just have one profile and then I put my profile ID in there and then these are the different sharing options you can share at the top of your blog post you can share at the bottom of your blog post so that's what I have turned on this one's turned off and I have the big size buttons here because I like the look of those you can go with small buttons or little bars and then down here I have the add my add this uh, email address that I'm logged that I have my account set up with and um, over here um, is a preview of what a post would look like with 
this information added to it. And then you can go to the advanced panel and you can say show add this on home page, pages, archives, categories, excerpts. Um, have add this track call um, clickbacks, address bar shares, copy text. So there's lots of options here, which I really like. I think these were all on by default. I don't remember if I went in and changed any of those. Um, here's my Twitter account. If you want to hook up your Twitter to it and um, show analytics in admin dashboard, um, that's pretty handy. We can go take a look at that. Uh, down here, I added my Google Analytics uh, ID and my Bitly login and my Bitly key. So if you don't know about Bitly, it's a link uh, shortener. You can go to bitly.com and you can set up an account there and then grab your, um, go to your settings and let's see if I can find it, maybe under advanced, uh, I forget where it is, uh, legacy API key, that's probably where it is. So yeah, if you get your legacy API key, then you can put it right in here, okay, into your bit.ly uh, key. I believe that's the one, let me check it. Yeah, that's the one. So that's legacy IP, uh, API key under your settings panel, under the advanced panel. Okay. And then what else do we have here? You can save your changes, which I'm not going to do because I didn't change anything. And let's go back to add this follow. Okay. And then, uh, oh, this is the different one. Add this follow. Uh, this is not on right now but if you wanted to have up here in the corner of your website like a follow me uh, set of buttons you could do that so let's just uh, turn it on real quick and show you uh, let's save this and you would put all your URLs in here and then let's go over to plugins and look for the follow me. I think it's already active. Let's see, follow button. Okay, it's not there. Um, okay, here's the ad, uh, follow this widget. So I think it's already on. So let's go over here and look. No, I don't see it anywhere. So it's not on. If you go and you look at the Smart Layers plugin, let's go take a look at that. Um, that's not active right now, but let me go ahead and activate this. And then I'm going to go down to settings and look at smart layers. There's different locations that add this will appear. And this smart layer um, plugin will show you where. So see here it says follow. Okay, so you can see over here where it's flashing. That's where your follow buttons would appear if you turn those on. And then your share buttons over here appear on the right. You can also move them to the left, I believe. The what's next, this is a cool little thing where it kind of gives you maybe what to look at next, kind of prompts your users to stay on your website longer. And then your recommended content would be down here. And then more options. Uh, here you can make it transparent or light or gray or dark. So let's just turn this on and, and see what it looks like. So let's save the settings. And then we'll refresh this website over here. There we go. So now you see the follow buttons up here. I don't like this one on this template because it gets in the way of my menu. So 
I turn that one off. Over here, likewise, it gets in the way of my sidebar, so I turned it off. And then down here, it would show recommended content, which is kind of cool. I may actually turn that back on because I like the way it looks with this template. Um, and then you notice this one staying in place as I scroll up and down. And then down here, this is kind of nice. It shows some recommended content. So I may turn actually some of these back on because I like the way it's looking with this uh, template. So that's the add this plugin. Um, it's pretty advanced. And then if you look over here on the, um, the add this website, you can look at the, um, the analytics right here. So let's go look at the analytics here. Now there's a pro version. I haven't signed up for that, so I'm sure you get a lot more with the pro version. But here it's showing your number of shares and clicks and follows. Here's the, the content that people are sharing and looking at. So it's got some pretty good information. So uh, check it out. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, thanks.